It's David Mann at 229 on a bit of a different day here at the radio station. We are bringing in pastors locally in central Ontario to just bring you some encouragement amidst COVID-19. And now joining me in studio, Pastor Matthew Rattan from Westminster Presbyterian Church in Barrie. Thanks so much for coming in. David, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. No problem. And so yesterday, you know, as you said, just off the air earlier here, church wasn't canceled, but it still happened just a little bit differently. And that was the case uh, for you guys too, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. We decided to cancel the worship service as a public gathering. So uh, we still actually led a service. Uh, it, it was really bizarre, actually, because it was like me, our music director, um, the person who runs the technology and the live stream and the sound person. So we were still doing it via live stream, but uh, let it in the in the sanctuary itself was empty. Kids ministry is empty. Nursery empty. Ushers, parking lot people, all that stuff. So it was different, but uh, we wanted to continue to worship and provide that for people, even though they physically probably wasn't wise for us to be together in the building. And what sort of reaction did you get from your congregation yesterday? Um, yeah, it, it's various, you know, because you you talk to people online or they send you messages or whatever or over the phone. And I think one of the things is that it's just, it's a pr unprecedented situation. Mm -hmm. um, I was talking to this uh, wonderful person, wonderful member of our church family, Mary, and she has actually been at that church since it started in the sixties. And, um, you know, she's like, I've only ever not been to church one Sunday before. You know, and so it's it's strange, it's different. Uh, people are feeling, I think, a bit unsettled by that. And I'm finding that for so many people, uh, regardless of their age, you know, going to worship on a Sunday morning to a worship service is, is like a backbone of their life. And uh, it's such a significant thing that we kind of like, you don't know what you've got until it's gone <laughs> sort of thing. So, you know, encourage people that, you know what? The building might be closed, but church is never canceled technically, right? Because the church isn't a building. The church is Jesus and his people worshiping and serving. So I think it's important to share that message. Um, people are feeling a bit uh, uneasy, but at the same time, God is on the throne. So we worship and serve him. And even though the, the situation and context is a bit different. So talk to me a little bit about the, the message that you've been trying to convey specifically to your congregation and, and to, the, to the wider audience too. I know you, mm -hmm. you blog at MatthewRattan.com and mm -hmm. you also are on our station with some really encouraging uh, devotionals uh, with Up. And uh, what, what's, what's the sort of, uh, what's the underlying theme you've been going after here? Uh, well, I think one of them is, is, you know, your faith and how it relates to fear. I think that's a really significant thing, David. Um, um, and fundamentally, at the end of the day, you know, the powerful presence of God is more significant than the powerful presence of fear. Because if you think about it, you know, fear is this big thing. And we're naive to think that fear isn't significant. And, you know, with all the information and misinformation out there. Um, and actually, I was leading this devotional for my son's hockey team. At, uh, he plays on the Slingshots, part of the Barry Christian Hockey League. And uh, doing a devotional with, with Coach Rob Knight, who is, who, is the, who is the main coach there. And... I'm with the kids, this was last week before some of the facilities got closed and we were talking about fear and faith. And I, I recalled something from my own childhood. Now, probably, probably about grade five. And there was this guy who was never really nice to me and, and he would come over and kind of intimidate me. Uh, but I had an older brother in grade eight and Jason, mm. and he- uh, <laughs> he, <laughs> he could go to bat for you. Yeah, he was, he was, you know, athletic and smart and popular and the whole thing. And so when he came around, all of a sudden that, that, that other guy who wasn't very nice to me wasn't so intimidating. So that guy, that bully is like fear, um, but, but God is like the older brother who comes along and reminds you. It's so, you know, the powerful presence of, of God is always more significant than the powerful presence of fear. And so God is on the throne. He is sovereign. Nothing changes that. Uh, the situation is a bit different. Uh, we were called to worship and serve him regardless. Mm -hmm. That's really, that's really good. And, and the fear, not only does it stem from the coronavirus that we know about, but it's also sort of this fear of the unknown, right? Yeah. We, we're, we're hearing things about our economy, even, mm -hmm. even today and, and in the days past of some of the measures that Canada is taking. And there's sort of this, like in the back of your head, you're thinking, okay, so if this is what we know. I mean, uh, the government leaders, they are, are getting information they're not totally sharing. And so mm. just sort of that whole realm can be a little bit uh, alarming, yeah, I would, I would say so. And so it really just highlights that what we kind of already know in the back of our minds, which is that we don't know a lot of things. Right. And so sometimes certain situations happen where that becomes very obvious and plain to us. So in those situations, my approach is, well, you know, yeah, there's a lot of stuff we don't know, but what do we know? Mm -hmm. We know that God is sovereign. We know that God is loving. We know that God hears and answers prayer. Uh, we know we are called to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Blessed people, bless people right? Blessed people, bless people. So, 
you know, I like to, you know, counteract the things we don't know with the things we do. Uh, and, and that's just a, is, is a good approach that I found to kind of approaching something like this when there is so much unknown. Yeah. And, and you did that with a, with a recent blog I want to kind of dive into, I mm-hmm. think would be really helpful for, uh, for folks listening right now, six ways to be loving in a pandemic. And mm-hmm. uh, can we just kind of dive into some of those things? Cause people, I mean, I, as, as you say, it's good to sort of just like, Hey, calm, calm the storm here. Jesus is greater than the storm at the same mm-hmm. time. What an opportunity this is for us as the body of Christ to just convey the the message of hope that only we have really in this time. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, when Jesus says in Mark, you know, 12, 31, love your neighbor as yourself, uh, that persists in a pandemic, right? So just because we're in a situation that is new uh, doesn't mean that all of a sudden we hit the mute button on on his commands to do that sort of thing. So I just wanted to highlight a few of the things and you know, I'll share a few, with, a few of them with you. Um, uh, one, is, one is around hoarding, actually. It's interesting, we see all the stuff around hoarding you know, and people really, really hoarding a bunch of stuff like to crazy degrees. And, you know, I think if we're to love our neighbor as ourselves, can we really imagine um, having, you know, a hundred of of one thing when our elderly neighbor goes without or when a single mother with three kids uh, goes without? And so sometimes hoarding can be a function of our lack of faithfulness um, because we don't really trust God to provide for us. So I'm not saying don't be prepared, you know, people should always be prepared and, and have some supplies and stuff, but that's different from what I'm talking about hoarding. So that's one of them. Uh, a second would be to, to, to tend to the sick and lonely. So because, you know, we, we, you know, in situations like this, we might think of ourself, of our own needs, our own wants. And of course, and I, I totally understand that, but there's people who are sick and lonely. Some are unwell for a variety of reasons, feeling scared, you know, in a world that can, as we see, startle quickly. So remembering the people who are sick and lonely, you know, observing best practices around health, but but those people continue to need uh, care. So like someone who's maybe in their 70s and is less inclined to want to go out, maybe recognizing that in your church body, saying, hey, I can go get you groceries, yeah. that kind of a thing? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a great example. Some people struggle to get groceries on a good day. <laughs> you know, it's true, like, yeah. Like my wife was at the grocery store the other day and it was like wall to wall. Yeah. And uh, and some people have expressed to me, you know, they, they, they struggle to get out there, have mobility issues. So going out, getting a few groceries that they need on a normal day is their day. Mm. Like that's what they need to do, right? And also another thing that we can also forget is that, you know, a lot of us have like, I, you know, I've got people I know, I'm a pastor. I know a lot of people in the community. I've got this, you know, family around me. A lot of people uh, don't have those connections to the degree that others do. So whether it's friends, maybe they're in a new community. Uh, maybe they don't have family around. Maybe they're just in a not a great place with their family. So people might need some help doing those practical things. Mm. All right, keep going. What else? What other yeah. ways can we be loving during this pandemic? Well, I, I thought one of the other ways is quite simply uh, is to not spread misinformation. Um, one of the things that's different from this now, I think, you know, I, from a health perspective, a lot of things are different from this than SARS perhaps, but I'm, I'm no doctor, but, you know, social media and information travels so quickly and so does misinformation. So quite often, I think people are going to social media first and th- there can be good community and sharing, et cetera, but if we're just kind of getting bad information and resharing it as if it's, you know, the gospel truth, there can be an issue with that. Mm, Yeah. That's good. Uh, I think taking your own health seriously, right? I think sometimes people in our, especially in our society, think I'm fine. I'm okay. Um, Well, if you're, if you know that you're unwell, if you know you're showing symptoms or signs of something and you're going out sneezing on people, uh, that's not loving your neighbor. So that's (laughs) not being tough. Uh, That's, that's being foolish. Another thing I thought, you know, supporting small business, like there's a lot of people we know, uh, friends and family who are, you know, small business owners and, and people are being uh, impacted. Actually, someone shared this idea with me like, hey, you know, if we can, why don't we buy some, you know, gift certificates or, or you know, um, you know, gift cards or whatever for certain businesses around or supporting them in some ways, like uh, knowing, knowing that we can, you know, hey, we can, we can redeem these later, you know, yeah. when stuff is a lot better. But um, a lot of people, you know, have these, you know, small businesses as a part of their life. And, and lastly, and, and, and all this is kind of connected to this, but really think and serve from a place of, of faith, right? We are a people of prayer and service and, and prayers make a difference. And so mm-hmm. um, I think that's really important. We want to physically do things and, and ways that back up the things we pray for, but uh, prayer makes a difference. And that is very significant for us to do. And I think people need to set aside dedicated prayer time uh, in their lives. Some people are like, what are we going to do? The NHL is not on, yeah. right? <laughs> As I say this, as I have my, you know, Toronto Maple Leafs hat on right now. Um, <laughs> but, you know, hey, set aside some dedicated time for prayer. And then we look for those opportunities to serve. Hey, the, the, those other opportunities we talked about and others will come up where we can be good neighbors, where we can be loving, observing best health practices, 
those things are going to come up and we pray that God uses us as witnesses and as, as the hands and feet of Christ in those situations. Wow, an opportunity to bring back some of that Christian piety from yeah. our uh, from our forefathers <laughs> of the faith, perhaps. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, Matthew, I want to just talk with you a little bit more. We'll come back and uh, dive yeah. into prayer and particularly for the government during this time because mm-hmm. a lot of it rests on their shoulders. And then, uh, you know, people, as you mentioned, NHL not being on, uh, what do I do with my time? Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe we'll dive into some resources they can get and how to really redeem this time uh, for God's kingdom. So we'll be right back. It's David Mann, and in studio with me is Pastor Matthew Rutan from Westminster Presbyterian Church in Barrie. And Pastor Matt, thank you so much for being here. Great to have you in. Just shedding some light on COVID-19. It really mm-hmm. is uh, taking our world for a turn, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's really an unprecedented thing, and people are, um, yeah, really wondering uh, about big picture things. And so this is not insignificant, and it's a good time to to pray and reflect and to think about what's going on and how we respond as people of faith as well. Mm-hmm. And we, we kind of left off at looking at uh, individual Christians and as a pastor, mm-hmm. sort of what what they can be spending their time doing and maybe reinstilling some some Christian disciplines and and yeah. you know they kind of like oh NHL's off NBA's <laughs> off <laughs> what, what, what am I going to do with my time and yeah. and this is an, a real opportunity isn't it Yeah absolutely I think you know I think there's so many of these great you know historic resources that we have uh, as a people of faith regardless of whether or not we can gather together in a building or not so um, you know some of those basic you know, but powerful Christian disciplines, prayer, obviously. Um, it's something that that we do, that Jesus tells us to do and gives us guidance about how to do. So there's that. Um, Bible reading too. You know, Bible reading is, a, I think Christians should be reading scriptures every single day. Um, and so that can be, a, this can be an incredible time to do that, to go deeper, uh, to spend that time. Um, a lot of people I know do that. A lot of people I know struggle doing that. Uh, mm-hmm. Now, if you've got some extra time, this is this is the time to to go deeper like that. Um, so those are some of them. Uh, you know, um, playing music, listening to music, uh, w- you know, worshiping these types of things, uh, looking for those ways. As we talked earlier in this section on, you know, loving people, you know, looking for those opportunities to be the hands and feet and and to serve um, is a part of your spiritual disciplines too. Mm. Yeah, really, really, really helpful. Mm-hmm. Really key things. Who knows? Maybe people will will be fasting during this time. Yeah, absolutely, fasting, and I think that. You know, we are in Lent, you know, and I, I know that people practice, uh, you know, the, the period of Lent differently and, and fasting in many circles has kind of gone out of favor and people are almost, you know, more likely to give up, you know, social media or something else like that in this time. But I think I think fasting, absolutely reminding ourselves of our dependence upon God, um, strengthening ourselves spiritually. Another thing that we've done as well, and I'm sure other churches are doing it too, is, you um, is providing resources. So sometimes that's a live stream service. Sometimes it's you know recordings of uh, of some prayer time. It could be recording of of whatever. Um, um, we produced a, a family devotional resource, knowing that you know even if you provide a, a live stream or something or something online, uh, families with kids can't always you know kids might not necessarily want to watch a whole you know worship service on YouTube or whatever. Um, but a little resource. Hey, how can we, you know, go through the scriptures together? How can we learn? How can we do something that helps us grow in our faith and learn about Christ uh, together as a family? And so, you know, if your own church does that, that's great. Um, or you can find something online as well, you know, regardless, could be some other place. I think one thing I would also mention too, David, is that I think, I think if people have a mechanism to stay connected to their churches, they should do that. So whether it's a, whether it's social media, whether it's a weekly email list, whether it's YouTube, whatever, because um, information will be going out about what we can do, about who we can, you know, who we can help. Uh, but so being connected like that uh, virtually uh, can really be a, a great source of information in a, in a time when there's a lot of misinformation out there and a lot of information that is a fear-based as opposed to faith-based. Mm, yeah, that's good. That's good. And we need that, we need that faith-based uh, perspective. And even, yeah. uh, you know, uh, we, need, we need that faith-based perspective as we're sort of dissecting what the media is telling us. Mm-hmm. And I just want to, for a second, get you to address uh, how we can empathize and pray specifically for our government. You have some experience. You actually used to work at Queen's Park. Mm-hmm. And uh, we already heard from Premier Ford earlier today. Currently, right mm-hmm. now, Deputy Prime Minister Freeland is addressing the media. Uh, w- what goes into these sorts of announcements and and what, what would you say are sort of the priorities as far as praying for our leaders in this time? Well, I think, yeah, I, I did work at Queens Park for a little while and uh, uh, certainly wasn't like a major power broker or anything like that. <laughs> I was, you know, one of the, uh, one of the footmen. So you understand speak. the language. <laughs> yeah, the language a little bit. I, I think one of the things I would pray for and encourage other people to pray for is just that nonpartisan cooperation. 
Mm-hmm. I think that's very important. Um, you know, not all that political posturing, which can go on and dominate, you know, the conversation on those levels uh, so often, but uh, just praying for that nonpartisan uh, commitment. Yeah, there's a lot of things at stake. And I think one of the things that my time at Queens Park really reminded me about was how intricate and more complicated most things are than we think they are. So we live in this time of Twitter sized bits of information um, where people like to, you know, summarize things and and uh, put people in categories very quickly and easily, but it's it's usually more complicated than that. It's it's more deep than that. So one decision is going to affect other levels of government. We've got municipal, we've got provincial, we've got federal, and you know there's there's funding structures. You know what happens in one ministry impacts another. Uh, how how does decision A in fact you know impact decisions B C D? So I think it's very complicated. They need our um, you know, certainly our, our, I think our prayers. And so praying for them to be wise, for them to be humble, for them to cooperate and to seek the best interest of the people they serve. Um, I think that's very important. And this also highlights in a democracy how important it is to have um, thoughtful, competent people. So this is just a reminder about how important that is. Uh, it's one thing to elect, you know, good people in good times. It's another people to, another thing to have people uh, there who when times are really challenging like these. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's, Really good, really good advice, really good feedback on, on this time. Mm-hmm. And just in, in closing, we, we appreciate you coming into the studio so much today. Uh, would you be, would you mind in just uh, however much time you want to take just to pray mm-hmm. over this coronavirus for our listeners, for Christians, and, and for our government now? Absolutely. Let's pray. Uh, gracious and heavenly Father, almighty God, we are so thankful for who you are. Uh, we are thankful that you are on the throne, that you are good, that you are loving, uh, that you are true and that you share your truth with us in scripture. And Lord, we pray for the situation we lift it up to you and we pray boldly for your healing to overflow upon the earth mm-hmm. around all people physically. Uh, Lord, we pray for your healing for those who are struggling, who are experiencing higher levels of worry than normal, anxiety than normal, and those things are high on a good day. And so we pray that the peace of Christ uh, that surpasses all understanding Uh, Come upon people, help people to turn to you, to seek you for wisdom, for counsel, for strength, and for support. And Lord, these these things um, can be very humbling for us. We humans can think we're so uh, uh, self-sufficient and and we've got all the answers, but of course, uh, we need you. We need your wisdom. We need your strength. We pray that you give that wisdom and strength and counsel to doctors and nurses. Uh, medics, administrators, people who are making decisions, uh, those people who aren't able uh, to be home like so many others. Uh, Give them uh, counsel and comfort and also to their families because none of us are an island. Uh, We pray that people and their families, that they are uh, able to feel your encouragement and support. And Lord, we pray for each other as as Christians uh, and as children of God. Help us to be loving, to see those opportunities uh, to serve all around us. And Lord, help us to be good witnesses for Christ Jesus. Uh, These things we pray in his beautiful name, the name that is above every name. Amen.